What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Ships Across the Border. My name is Max. I'm here with Chris. And today we have on the fisherman, the <laughs> blue whale hunter, <laughs> the grizzly bear, what the Ian. F- Like for like speaking better and shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> so why'd you say for the podcast? Bacon's not real, and neither are now. No, bacon's not real. Cause if you go to a grocery store, there's too much bacon. Up. Keep working, your time will come. It sounds like you're eating human bone. It's a mini. It sounds like you're eating hamster bone. It's a, it might be stupid, but country. is India in the Middle East? I don't think so. <laughs> is it? Uh, AKA. AG. Why do people call you AG? Um, uh, yeah, what the fuck is up with that? I, I right. yeah. never understood that. So, someone I came someone asked me, like, oh, you know, I don't even know what Dink Dame it was. AG, like, of, AG of one. It was something. I'm like, AG of O2. I have no idea That's who that is. Okay, like, Ian. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know right. Ian. So, this camp I work at, right, during the summer, um, we were doing introductions, and there was another guy on staff named Ian on the mm-hmm. basketball staff, and we were going in a circle, and it just so happens they got to him before me, mm-hmm. and... They were like, what's your name? And I was like, well, my name's Ian, too. But he's he said it first, so I'll just be AG. And they're like, well, what's AG? My name's Ian Alexander Green. Mm-hmm. So Alexander Green. I hear people call me, like, IG. Because it's like, Instagram, I guess. And it's like, go fuck yourself. Because that's just, like, yeah. annoying. <laughs> that is, that is, <laughs> like, that's just like hella Matt. annoying. You know, Mac, yeah. Mac's full name is McClellan. Yeah, but, but it's they like, call him, it's McClellan Andrew Creek. Yeah, that's hard, though. So it's Mac. That's it, that sounds like hella premeditated. So it's like short for McClellan. No, it's his like initials. That's hella premeditated though. Yeah. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> That's hard. My as dad well. calls me MDR. MDR. Max Dustin Rolnick. Hell yeah! You knew Why that. do you I didn't know? Get, that. You didn't guess that though. Nobody would ever <laughs> guess that. You knew that. that though. What's your Dude, middle this name? This is bothering you. My, I'm so loud as a human being. I can actively see every time I start yelling, my sound waves go crazy. As so just turn it like that. Yeah. Just don't. Pay. Well, that didn't help because like he's still in the. I can still definitely see it. What's Fuck your What's your middle name, Chris? You know my middle name. You made fun of it repeatedly. Albert? No. You always do that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Jason. Jason's my friend Jason's middle name is Albert and I always make fun of him for that. I know fucking... It was close. James is fucking Edgar. That is so fitting. James is Edgar? That's so fitting though because he's ugly as James- fuck. <laughs> That's crazy. James Edgar Bradbury. What, what the fuck is your name, dude? <laughs> what the fuck's your middle name? First letter. A L. A L. I would say Alex or Alexander. No. I might cut this it's just, like, <laughs> just because it's something so like stupid long. as fuck. What is it? Alfred. I knew it. Mm. <laughs> that stupid ass name. One of the Christopher ops. Alfred Beeman. I knew that. One shit. of the C-A-B. ops. C A B. Wow. That's funny as fuck. Right, so Ian, what's up? You show up here randomly <laughs> in the middle just of the season. How, how did that happen? How the fuck you get here? So this is a long story. This is like my fourth school in three years. I don't know if y'all knew that. Nope. Yeah, nope. this is my fourth school. That's why we have people on the show. So, I don't know shit. Yeah, this is my fourth school in three years. Um, so I actually had this offer in like February because I went JUCO mm-hmm. in Minnesota. I went to two JUCOs, one in Kansas where I didn't like I was a red shirt. We were like 10th in the nation, though. But like Damn. we had like fucking guards that were like 23 years old. And I'm 18. Like, so kind of like here. It was just like Ish. fitting. Ish. You know what I'm saying? So um, after my JUCO season in Minnesota, you know, like field level. Yeah. 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 So Coach Long reached out to me on field level, whatever. And I was like, like, damn, like New York's like, like my parents, like my mom's from Pittsburgh. My dad's from New York. So I was like, I've been to New York before, but I was like, it's fucking Buffalo. Like, I'm not about to go to Buffalo. So. Shout out Buffalo though. Yeah. No, Buffalo is like a great place. Like. Weather's been good as hell recently. That is actually a fact. Compared to, compared to Canada, it's always about five degrees warmer. Celsius. Wow. Okay, Celsius. Man. Yeah, which makes it feels good. Feels good. <laughs> Wait, Celsius is a lower number, right? No, Celsius. Are you retarded? I don't know. Where do you live? The R word is crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna censor myself. Celsius is like like one Celsius. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Yeah. Wait. One cell, yeah. Okay. What's the what's the so the a, a ten degrees Celsius would be like fucking thirty degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, okay. Yeah. I was Go on. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know Fahrenheit. So how well, how much Celsius is? No, I don't know Celsius. So how much is five Fahrenheit? Like difference? Like two, two or one? No, because it's not that much different. I'm making my head hurt. 
I will cut this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 100%. So, so um, Coach Long like like offered me, and he was like, "Yeah, like we can go on a virtual visit." Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Okay, cool." So he Facetime me in Sully's gym. He FaceTimes Did me. Did he start off? He's so like, weird. what's up, man? What's up, buddy? What's up, Yeah, man? he said, what's, what's up, buddy? <laughs> what's what, up, man? I was like, yeah, what's up, buddy? So, like, he gives me, and it wasn't his fault. Like, it wasn't his fault at all. But he gives me this visit, and, like, his quality was trash. Yeah, well, that's got to be hard as fuck. To do yeah, like, in the first place. his quality was trash. The weather, it looked, it looked like fucking Hogwarts. And I was like, bro, I'm not going here. <laughs> I was like, It still looks like Hogwarts. No, like, it definitely does. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, I'm not going here. So... But I, I would see you guys, like, win games. Like, they won the AMCC last year. And mm-hmm. I was like, damn, this is, like, a winning program. Like, mine as well. So I was, like, on the fence 100%. And Wait, so then, the first school was Kansas. Second school was Minnesota. Yeah, so the first was school. the third school? The third school was Greenville. That was this I, year? Yeah, it was this year. How old are you? I'm 21. I just turned 21, like, the other day. Mm, yeah. Okay. I thought it was, I thought it was our age. Nah, I turned no. 21 the other day. It's but, good. um... Been so, to casino yet? We'll talk about. We'll get into the casino. Not even into casino yet. But um, so I was like, I was about to come out. I'm telling my parents like, yeah, like I'm really rocking with my die. And like, like I said, my mom's family from Pittsburgh. They played in the Allegheny Conference. So I was like, this is easy for family to come to games, whatever, whatever. So out of nowhere, this I'm in like a Twitter space, and like I post my highlights just because like why not? And a school called Greenville, mm-hmm. Greenville University. My uh, old assistant coach, Coach Josh, hits me up, and he's like, hey man, like I like your film. I'm like, oh shit, cool. On so, field level or no, this is on Twitter. Okay. Oh, dude. so yeah. he like hits me up, and I'm like, all right, bet. And he hits my roommate up too, so I'm like, dog, like if you go, I'm going. He ends up not going anyway, mm-hmm. but they have this thing called the system, which is like a score is like dream, a hundred shots, no defense, fifty threes. Like you were talking about earlier, you only play for like a minute at a time. There's like oh, it's like um, that's Grinnell. That's, yeah, Grinnell. It's the same thing. Like we weren't allowed to say Grinnell in the locker room. Like it would be like if I called you like any type of derogatory thing. Like if you said Grinnell, like our head coach would be like, "What did you just say?" That was there was like beef there, or just because like he didn't it was I'm so lost because he was okay. Grinnell is a school that is purely based on analytics. Like that's how their coaching. It's literally is. just stats. So it's literally like the best shot is a three based statistically because uh-huh. whatever you make whatever the percentage is yeah. it's like worth more than a two if you whatever so they literally don't shoot twos they play a diamond press or whatever press they play and if you break the press you get a layup but that being said they're throwing it up for a transition yeah. three on the other side so it's like if you if you shoot fucking 53s and I shoot 52s then who wins the game like they're, ba- they're banking yeah. on the it's, fact that so cute, yeah. they're ba- literally in a, in a <laughs> sense yeah they're, so they're banking on the fact that if you shoot 60% from like from two, mm-hmm. you can shoot forty percent. But if you shoot forty percent from three, they'll win. Yeah. yeah. So that was the whole thing. Like they scored two hundred points one game. Yeah, like fun. our our like, <laughs> it's it's so stupid saying this. We led the nation in like in points, but we also led by like points given up. So sure. like we would score one hundred and thirty, but lose by like twenty five points. Houston Rockets vibe, bro. It was literally, the same. literally, like yeah. no plays, no anything. Like our practices were like, you get in, you shoot one hundred threes. And then, like, open gym. So like, you're just weird. hooping. And the coach, like, loved it. So, and it was like. You so I win? No. We, I would. I, I we think only it would got be, one game. I think it would be terrible to play there for a year. Like, because I need, like, structure and I'm a system player. But, dude, playing there for one game, just go and shoot Bro, 15 threes. The first game maybe was. Maybe hit eight, have fucking 24. The first math, game was fucking, so much fun. Yeah, like, but after that, she gets annoyed. And then when you, like, you, when you look at the score and you're like, damn, like 110 or 130? Like, we getting our ass kicked. <laughs> but it seems like, oh, yeah, we've been scoring that. But it's like, no, <laughs> like, you get your ass kicked. Bro, I swear to God, guy, guy named Brody Fox, shout out to Brody Fox, gave us 70 points. Oh, all dunks. Sure, 30, sure, 34 for 38. How tall is this guy? He's like 6'6". Six, 6'6", six. Six, six, athletic. Can play above the rim. Dude, Cook, would, would, Cook like, would give them fucking Dog, Yeah, throw it over the top. Catch it, dunk it. Wow. That's it. And that's all he was doing. 34 for 38. I didn't know until after the game when the PA announcer was like, and Brody Fox for Wisconsin Stout has broken the school record with a record high 70 points. And I look at my teammate. I'm like, fucking, we let him get 70? <laughs> I swear to God. And his big man had like 38. So we're like, bro, we just let two people combine for 108 points. Let alone what the rest of the other eight motherfuckers did. They had 108 by themselves. Bro, it was fucking insane. So I went there and like I was like when the coach, when coach like when the coach was recruiting me, was telling me about the system, he was like, dog, like you can get after it. Like 
he wasn't saying I was like a program changer, but he was like, you and a few other pieces, like we could win the Slyak. And that was the name of the conference. So I was like, okay, for sure. And it was only eight hours away from home. So I was like, all right, like eight hours versus 22, that helps with the family, this and that. So I committed and I went up there and it's literally like middle of nowhere. Mm. But I went Juco, so I'm used to this, like middle of nowhere. And then it's like, and I'm not saying I'm not a Christian, but like it's really religious. Like we had to go to, like I've always been a Dean's guy, but like this season I wouldn't have been, I would have been ineligible because I didn't go to chapel enough which is like complete and utter bullshit. Holy shit. So you had to go to chapel 15 times. And they censored the, they censored the music during fucking Duh. warm-ups? Like, ah. Yeah, on TikTok all the time. I think so. I think they, no, it'd be like Michael Jackson. Like, <laughs> like something like <laughs> every, something everybody can get down to. So like, I'm midway through the season. We're like 0-7 in conference. And it's not like a tough 0-7 where we're losing like heartbreakers. It's like, we're taking eight hour trips, no one on the bus, like we're gonna get blown out by 40. <laughs> so, and you're gonna score 120 points. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna score 120 points. Dude, if we scored 120 points in a game, Coach I would throw an actual, he'd take us all out to steak dinner. Dog. Like, yeah. That would be like, some, he, might, he might cry. Honestly, we've probably gone three game stretches of scoring 120 points. Dog. Close. Think about the math on that one. You know, it's less 40 than 40 points a game. Close. That's terrible math. Close. We, we averaged no, 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 we no, averaged no, 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 we no. No, we did not. I swear we did. On the lower half, at least we did. Every single game was like 52, f- 6, like, no. Maybe, I don't know. But damn sure, we were close. Close to like, but off to make that comment. Moving on. <laughs> so, Definitely close. So we're like 0-6, like midway, throughout the, like midway through non-conference. And I'll never forget this. I was at, it was actually, I was at my coach's house. It was like a team dinner. And I'm sitting next to my teammate. And this is like my best friend, BK, my guy. And I'm like, dog, like, should I transfer? Like, just out the fucking clear blue. I'm like, should I transfer? And he's like, well, shit, I'm not coming back. And I was like, damn. So I, I'm looking through my contacts, and, like, I'll fucking show you. <laughs> like, the C's in my contacts are nothing but coaches. So I'm, like, I'm just scrolling is. through these. Wow. Just like, That's how it is. Just, like, who do I call? Like, who can I call? So I see Coach Long, and I'm like, I wonder if he still rocks with me. So I, I'm like, hey, Coach. <laughs> I was like, I'm getting a call right now. And I text Coach Long. I'm like, hey, man, think I made the wrong decision. You know, like, I'll come in and be, like, just a practice guy or whatever, just, like, be around the team. But I was like, I think I made the wrong decision. So he calls me. And um, I go outside. And he's like, what's up, buddy? What's course, up, man? Of course. Hella cool. What's up, man? How are you? <laughs> Hella cool. And he's like, yeah. He was like, oh, I'd love to have you here. He was like, you know, I think there's a few guys that, you know, like – that you could come play with and you'd be you'd be a key piece. And I was like, okay, cool, you know, whatever. And he was like, uh, he was like, you, you want to come my semester? And I was like, yes. Like, I want to come right now if I can. And he was like, okay. He was like, well, do all this. And he was like, I'll talk to Coach Hack. So I was like, fuck. I was like, I've never talked to Coach Hack. I don't know if Coach Hack's an asshole. Like, I don't know what type of guy Coach Hack is. Because if I'm a coach, I gave you one chance already. Mm-hmm. You said no. You basically spit in my face. You're not coming back. So I'm praying whole week if, like, please let Coach Hack say yes. So Coach Long gives me a call and he sounds like hella upset. I'm like, hey, what's up? He was like, yeah, buddy. He was like, he's like, yeah, Coach Hack wants you up here, but you just got to do a lot of legwork. And I was like, what do I have to do? He was like, you got to do your fast foot. And I was like, bro, I do that shit tonight. Like, makes no difference to me. So I get all you that say done. say that until it's like actually 20 hours of shit, dude. Duh. So I'm like, bro, the amount of people who were supposed to like want to try out but just didn't get that shit done. Duh. Crazy. I was hell bent on it. Like, I'm calling my mom. We're standing on the phone to like, 10 o'clock at night like what's my what's my tax such and such Facts. and she's going through her files like do you really want to go to the school I'm like yes I need to go to the school like and she's like well this is your fourth school and I was like I know this will be the last school so I ended up transferring well I was supposed to be up here like December no January 3rd that was a magic date and then there's my best friend who coaches at DUville he's like yeah like are you sure you're coming up here January 3rd and I was like why wouldn't I he was like there's like a travel ban so what the fuck is a travel ban? He's like, it's like snow. Oh, because of the weather? He's like, it's a blizzard. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bro, what the fuck am I getting into? So I'm thinking like, do I really want to go that bad if there's blizzards where it's like I can't travel? But I was just like, yeah, let's go. And I came up here and I'm like, it's been cool ever since. But yeah, bro. Fucking rocky start. Hella rocky start. Yeah, three people died in that blizzard. Yeah, that's what he told me. Shit's crazy. He was like, people would just die like being in their cars. It's fucking insane. Yeah. That's what happens when you fucking live beside a lake. It's violent. <laughs> I was in Niagara this past weekend for my birthday with a bunch of my boys, bro. And 
Bro, we you could feel the mist from the falls walking down the strip. Really? Yeah, bro, it was kind of fire. I'm not gonna lie. No, it was trippy as fuck. It was like, bro, it's not raining outside, but like you just feel it, bro. <laughs> Being next to a lake is crazy. Nah, it's a fact, bro. It's actually because, bro, it could, also, it could be so fire, so fire, but so butt at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate, bro. If you go next to a lake, if you, bro, if you live next to a lake, bro, you could go on the fucking lake. You could go water sports. You could go fucking. Paddleboard, you could do all this shit. Okay. When it's nice outside, but when it's not nice outside, it's really not nice outside. Because, bro, everything's snow. Yeah, I guess I feel Snow, you. snow's way harder because there's more fucking condensation or whatever going to the clouds in the air to right. create more fucking rain or whatever. Mm. Rain, rain's harder next to a lake, bro. It's fucking, the wind chill is harder next to a lake. No, it's a fact. It's fucked up. That but it's fire in the lake summer. Is different. So you're originally from Cleveland. I'm not from Cleveland. Dude. Where are you from? That I'm born in Virginia. Brick. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that was like crazy from the middle left side of the middle, like, <laughs> now I'm yeah. fucking lost that, that's what happens that's that's so you're from um, so, Albany so <laughs> born in Virginia <laughs> moved from Virginia when I was like three been in Texas ever since ah uh, okay yeah. like, why do you claim you're from Texas it's because you moved yeah, to Texas yeah I've been I've been in Texas since I was three but like birth certificate says Virginia Beach Virginia okay. where did you play high school basketball uh, at a little charter school called Harmony School of Innovation in Fort Worth so like, how was your high school career Fucking a doozy. Like, played varsity my freshman year. Was ineligible my sophomore and junior. For because or academics? Or? Academics. Okay. Like, left high school, and I know you guys are going to laugh, but left high school with, like, a 1.7 GPA. I don't know GPA is that well. Bad. It's terrible. On, on a scale well, of... We know people who I was have say, had worse at one point. I'm not no. going to mention names. No, no, no. On we a scale say. of four... 1.7 better. Ooh. No. I'll cut it. I'll cut it. Fuck it. I'll cut it. Dude. So I had a 1.7. Uh, I had a 1.7 in high school. But, like, I, like, I didn't really have a high school career. I just had, like, my senior year, I only played, like, four games. Like 40? Four. Oh. I only played four games. Only played 40. That's had, your whole high school I had, career. I had, yeah, I didn't play yeah, no. my entire I only high played, school career. I only played four games. And... Only reason I got an offer is because my high school coach, my senior year, was an assistant coach at a JUCO. Like, he just, like, moved from that JUCO to coach high school. And, um, yeah, like, he would see me in practice, and he basically just vouched for me. Like, my film was, like, maybe a minute and 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. It was just me scoring. Like, I averaged, like, in those four games, I was, like, 30. But, like, like that's, like, we were losing a lot. Were you playing so, any competition? Uh, yeah, like they were like decent players like, you know, like there was always that guy that would like give me a hard time until like I figured them out and it's like, okay, now I'm about, just about to bust your ass. But like there was nobody who was like, like for like DFW Hoopers, like I wasn't running into a Cade Cunningham or an Avery Anderson. Like I wasn't, these are like D1 guys. Like I would run into those, them at like, like open runs, but like not in high school at all, like in, in our league. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so he basically just vouched for me. But, like, my high school basketball was literally me going to L.A. Fitness after school every day with my granddad and playing against, like, 35-year-olds. Like, 25, 30, and just getting, like, roughed up. So, like, that was literally it. I'll like, do it to you. I didn't. I said that'll do it to you. Most definitely. I didn't play. I played, like, maybe four tournaments of AAU ball. Mm -hmm. like, what team? Texas Express. So, Quan played for Texas Elite. I played for Texas Express, so we would, there was a big gym called Duncanville Fieldhouse. I would, I think, no, Quan's older than me, so I, but I saw his team, like I saw his organization, but yeah, so that was really it for high school. Like, I found out what JUCO was and that all you had to do was graduate, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm fucking going JUCO. Like I, like I could just hoop. All I had to do was graduate high school because at my school we had to have you had to have a three point to play sports. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dog, like, I'm not fucking doing that, like. Tell me I can just play basketball outside but graduate and all I have to do is try out for a JUCO. Fucking light work. Like that's all I would I would call my dad after school every day. He'd be like, How was school? I'm like, I don't know, I didn't pay attention. All well, I gotta do is graduate. Yeah, he was like, How are you gonna go play? Because my favorite team at the uh, time was UConn. He was like, How are you gonna go play for UConn? And I was like, I don't know, I'll go JUCO. <laughs> and he was like, Are you serious? And I was like, Yeah, super serious. Tell my mom that and everything. I swear. You had no idea that Juco was, like, tough as fuck. And Dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Listen, bro. It's going to—it's my—this <laughs> is fucking crazy. There's going to be a lot of shout-outs to this hoe because, like, I remember certain people that, like, fucking, like, trigger things. Like, oh, this isn't what I think it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fucking Fort Scott Community College, Jayhawk Conference.
toughest conference in the nation as far as JUCO goes, right? So my first day of open gym, I get there at like 11 o'clock. Coach is like, open gym at three. Like I don't even get to unpack all my shit. So I'm like, okay, cool. I see, this is my guy, Steve. He's like a 6'5 point guard, 40 inch vertical mm -hmm. off one leg. So I transferred D1 after that year. Texas Some State. Like <laughs> he went, went Texas State. Yeah. So he, he, I'm guarding him 94 feet because I'm like, yeah, I'm about to show the coach I'm a dog. But he's just walking me down. like, And I can't steal the ball from him, so I'm just, he's just walking me down. I'm trying to like make it hard for him. Hits me with like a wide body in and out. Next thing I hear, boom! <laughs> Bitch! <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? They're like, hey, bro, don't guard him. So I'm like, what do you do? He's like, he just dunked. And that was like... That was the season in a nutshell. Just me being bullied <laughs> by everybody. I'm running into six yeah. three guards, one eighty five. We should have like, watched Last Chance U a few times. <laughs> Dog, bro, definitely could have benefited from that, bro. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, like fucking JUCO. Like I know it's gonna be tough, but I'm thinking it's gonna be tough. Like you're in the middle of nowhere. There's one Walmart. Mm -hmm. There's like no Seven Elevens. No, it's like the basketball there. Fucking unbelievable. Bro, college basketball at any level anywhere. Is unbelievable. Yeah. And like, I used to like, so I live like 10 minutes away from TCU. So I used to work out at TCU like every other day, right? And I would see like D Bane, Alex Robinson, like all these great players. And like, they would talk about Juco and they'd be like, yeah, they nice. And I was like, but I play with y'all, so they're not as nice as y'all. Bro, like, until you really in that shit, bro. Like, there's a guy, there's a guy who I used to guard in. He would be like, dog, if I wanted to, I could bust your ass without us making contact. Like, I don't have to put my body on you at all. Like, I could just shift the fuck out you and get to where I want to go. And I was like, no, you can't until he fucking did it. <laughs> and I was like, Where'd he, where is he now? He went to Roosevelt in Chicago. What is that? It's an NAIA. Right. Yeah. I'm not, much, I'm not very familiar with NAIA. NAIA is tough. NAIA is kind of like the equivalent to like D3, but they have like scholarship money. Mm hmm but yeah but yeah I know I, I definitely I played some like people in high school who were like I'm like yo this guy could go this guy could get a scholarship player and they end up at an NIA school yeah they definitely got a full ride there yeah no, nah, there's some like there's some guys who leave their D1s and go NAIA for and, sure and still go pro like for overseas sure, or sure, whatever for sure for sure yeah so you can go pro from bro I've seen some stories on fucking TikTok of dudes who not who like tried out for their like tried to walk on four years, never made it, and then just kept working, kept working, and eventually got a pro contract. Like how crazy bro, is that? Dog. You, you gotta be consistent, bro. We talked about this in the last and every single episode basically, but you gotta do something consistent. If you do cons something consistently long enough, you're gonna see some some results. Some results. Dog, it's bro, yes. Like if you do anything every day, you're gonna see some type of improvement from day one to day fifteen to day thirty. Mm -hmm. Like So if you do this for six years, bro. You're gonna if be you do this, as fuck up bro, you're gonna you be do. tough. Like, there was this guy that my brother went to school with, and he was like freshman starting on varsity, but he was just dumb as hell. Like, mm -hmm. when I say like, yeah, I left school with a one point seven, but I was still like smart. Like, if you said Ian, apply yourself, I'd be like, okay, cool. But he was just like, Couldn't like incompetent. Like, Couldn't you know what I'm saying? So he was just like incompetent, right? Mm -hmm. And he ended up going to a JUCO, and like dropped out the JUCO which I think is like virtually impossible because they damn near do the work for you mm -hmm. like I would have a teacher who would tell us the answers of the test and then give us the test right it's like bro it's it's easy so like, the only way you can fail is if you dead ass don't try the only way you can fail is if you don't go to your class okay. shout out Joe like well, you why that was I want to say that I want to say that crazy we're definitely straight. That shit crazy straight we're definitely but that shit. you can like still go to if you go to your class and just be like it's Chris Beeman here, present. Okay, cool. You can sit on the back of your phone and just chill. Mm -hmm. But, like, at like attendance counts so much, and it's, like, kind of crazy, but, like, that's just what it is. But he ended up dropping out the JUCO and just played in pro-ams, and now he plays in, like, Puerto Rico pro. And, like... But school's not for everybody. School isn't for everybody. Like, sometimes there's just that guy that's like, yeah, fuck that. I'm about to just go play ball. Mm -hmm. And in Texas, it's such, like, a melting pot of basketball. It's like... If you really want to go pro without going to school, you can because there's somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. And their word means enough where it's like, yeah, I vouch for him. He can go. Okay, for sure. We're going to put him in this fucking little league in Mexico where he's not even playing on in indoor courts. And he's going to get paid. <laughs> 
He's no, bro. I swear to God, he was literally playing in a park. <laughs> Dog, bros playing, bros playing the rec. Bros, bros drooling over the park. Bros playing. Go <laughs> heard the park. And started drooling. No, nah, you're crazy for that. Spit actually. Spit <laughs> you're fucking nuts for that. <laughs> that may have been water actually. <laughs> bro needs to get on the game. <laughs> oh my god, but yeah, he ended up like he's playing pro ball now. But yeah, like it's. I, I figured that out and I was so like, Dog. Playing pro- professional basketball also, like, so much of it's got to do with getting a passport because, yeah. you know, like, pro teams are only allowed a certain amount of imports, like two or three, whatever the number is, probably varies throughout Europe and throughout wherever you play. But if you get a, let's so just say there's a 12 or 14 man roster and they're only allowed three imports, that means that 11 people have to be, lo- have a passport. Mm-hmm. So if you could be a quote unquote import, but have a passport, that is so much better because they don't have to waste import spots. They're way more valuable. Yeah. No, that's a fact. Like, there's so many. It's like basketball is like, and this sounds so stupid, and I'm going to sound like hella cliche. Basketball is so much bigger than just basketball. Like, There's so much politics involved. There's so many politics involved. Israel is one of the smallest countries in the world, but I guarantee you, bro, Maccabi Tel Aviv makes the Euro League every single year. Like, Israeli basketball, like the professional leagues there, Mm. are top quality because if you're Jewish, you can get an Israeli passport. Right, and so Jewish people who play Division One schools or whatever all across America who can now get a passport can now don't count as an import. You can fuck around, see Max in the league, no <laughs> bro. That's how, it, bro. That's how it works. One of my boys who plays at UFT now, shout out Ryan Rudnick. He, when we played in um, for Team Canada and Maccabi this summer in Israel, got some professional interest from a Division One professional team there, and like if he gets a passport, he can play pro. That's right. just how it is, especially if you're Jewish. No, you, just, you, can, you can just get a passport. It's a process, but like, it just opens up so many doors. It's a process that's completely worth it. Yeah. Like, like my my biggest thing is like I I don't even want to play like like I want to play pro ball. Of course. Yeah, what's like, your goal? Like, who doesn't? Like, my goal at the end of the day is I want to say I played pro ball just like to kind of say I did it. Like, I want to get certain like achievements, like yeah, win a championship, mm-hmm. score a thousand points, like all the like cool shit. But like. I want to play pro ball in Spain for like maybe Spain's your, like if you can play that like Spain, Spain France not the, obviously like not the league but like if you like, if not the league where would be Spain yeah Spain France Bro, France got some fucking hoopers when we played them they this summer they definitely do dude 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 their starting point guard was six five fucking brother he's the best player in the tournament he was in, he's playing like professional in France he is insane European basketball is way better than American basketball I'm just gonna say that straight up you've played against European players yeah in Texas Jorge <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. well. Come on the show. Like, <laughs> yeah, facts. Like, when I was at Greenville, there was two guys, Carlos and Jordan, and me and my friend were playing them on two on two, and they were just busting our ass off of back cuts. That's so fucking fire. That's one like, like, story. One hear really fun story. Okay, continue. And I'll say. I was like, they were just killing us off of back cuts. Like, you go here, I go here. Oh, you play me this way. Up, oh, gotcha. Lay up. Like it was nothing skillful. Like I mean, but that makes you realize like. Bro, because like we think a two on two is just like a a one on one on one on one. Like that's all it is. There is no help defense, no none of that shit. Mm-hmm. I'm saying like I'm looking at him. I look at the ball. He's gone layup. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Yeah, game. Who's on next? No, run it back. Cause none, y'all didn't do shit. We just fucking killed you. Like so. Like when I saw that, and then I they would start telling me like, bro, yeah, like watch the Euro League, and I would see players like Emmanuel Mudiay, who's from Texas, who's from Dallas. Um, Anthony Bennett get like fucked off over there. And it's like, oh yeah, y'all can hold y'all alone in any open gym. But when it comes to like, all right, we're gonna run this, this, and this, boom, layup. Like you fucking you can't do it. And it's nothing against you. That's just the way his basketball is taught in America. But like over there, oh my God. It's fucking insane. Their scores are like it's it looks terrible on paper. Their scores are like 83 to 70. But every bucket is so But every so bucket skilled. is so efficient. It's like, yes, that was the, they have a 24 second shot clock. That was the best bucket they could have gotten in 24 seconds. Instead of fucking just, what does coach say? A hezzy Jimbo? Yeah, hezzy Jimbo. Hezzy Jimbo on the right wing. Like, yeah. listen to that shit. So, at my prep school, there was like a bunch of internet. It was like an international school. It was a boarding school. So, people came from all over. And me and my friend, who's actually the assistant coach at Lake Erie College, shout out Gabe, he was our assistant coach. Like that, like the year before he went back to his alma mater, mm. he played there as well. He, and he's unreal. Like he had professional opportunities, but COVID kind of fucked him up. So he like was playing like semi pro, averaging forty a game. Like he's 
one of the toughest hoopers I've ever played with. So we're playing me and him. And then we're playing against one of my other teammates, uh, my like six seven, like Marcus Saul, like center, who is playing at Kenyon College now. Right. And another not, another dude from Spain, named Manu, who was on one of the other teams there because there's a bunch. Like, it was like a. It was kind of like a. It's hard to explain, but it's like a ton of different programs out of the same school. Right. Both Europeans and bro, they were communicating to each other in Spanish, <laughs> and like, and they knew we didn't understand. And it'd be, don't quote me on this, but they said. Corta so many times, and that either means like back door, like door, or short. I don't know which one, but they had two words, so they would tell each other when it's short in Spanish mm. or when to go back door, and they fucked us up a few times. Fucked us up off straight fucking so European short, shit. Short means what, like, Search up on your, what what short is. I mean, in what was the play? Called? Corta. Obviously, back door is back door, but what would that? What would they do off of the other one? It's, it means sh- like they're shooting it short. Okay, but it's one of the two. Corta. And if it's a third off, if it's something else, then I'm an idiot. And I guess, I don't know. That's my memory's not that good. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but it's something. Nah. Short. 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 Okay, yeah. So something else was, something else was like door. Mm-hmm. And they were just fucking, uh, obviously not paying attention because it's two on two at 10 p.m. And I'm tired and I just want to <laughs> shoot threes. <laughs> and nah. I get fucking back door like Bro. crazy. They they got basketball over there. No, they, got, they got IQ over there. They're smart, smart people. They're smart as hell. That's why Lucas said that it's easier to score here than it is in fucking Also, Europe though, League. it could be attributed because like, school in European countries is way more difficult than it is in America. Like, yeah, they're way just more like, difficult. They're just, like, more logical. Yeah, so they just, like, like that, that, could, that could honestly be something. Maybe I'm on something there. Like, <laughs> like, they have to use their brains way more, way earlier, and it's, like, way more school is difficult. They're being challenged more mentally. Mm-hmm. So they just think better than American people do. That's that's low key effect because I went my high school was like primarily like people from like the Middle East and like um, like people from like Mexico and like all the kids I graduated with were like first generation kids, right? So like their parents are from like their homeland, yeah. right? And like just seeing them do stuff, they would do it like way more efficient and way more logically than like what I would like. They're the definition of work smarter not harder. Oh, for mm-hmm. sure. Like. Bro, people, like, racially think, like, oh, Asian people are so smart. But, bro, school in fucking those Asian countries is so difficult that they come here and it's like a walk in the park. It's a walk in the park. That that, that creates that stereotype because, bro, it's so fucking easy for them because they've been doing so much more difficult. Like, I was – a lot of people from, like, Korea, from, like, different, uh, different like, countries over in Asia fucking came to my school. Mm. And, like, I would talk to them. And one of my friends was, was Japanese or whatever. Um, Japanese and his family. Like, he's like, bro, school from where I'm from is – Infinitely more difficult. Like we have like twelve pages of math homework a night on top of like every other subject. I'm like, dude, like that's cr- like I could like how do you even do that? Yeah, I can it's a fact. But also like I guess that's why schools don't have sports teams over in Europe. Yeah, because it's all club stuff. Mm. Yeah, like what Oscar was saying and like what I know from obviously my friends playing Europe is like because it's so school focused. So we uh, play for like a separate organization. It's like their a- it's away. like AAU for them is like year round. Yeah, which is like. Crazy as hell. AU in Canada is year round basically, depending really? on where you are, depending on the level of high school basketball you mm-hmm. play. If you play like really, really high high school level basketball, then you don't need to play AU. But a lot of people who play like at a school like where you went to, like a school like I went to before I transferred, that you need you play AU full year round. One of my friends played for like U Sports, Sport to U. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, U Sports. That's Whatever. how. It, yeah. I mean, is he like really, really tough? Yeah, he's hard. He's tough because that's the, like one of the best teams in Canada. Like he's every tough. single player on the team goes D one. He's tough. So, yeah. I played for like a U Sports branch. It was Vaughn, U Sports Vaughn. It was like mm. a, uh, the, the U Sports is like the they're like in EYBL and stuff. Yeah. So many guys in the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those guys in the league play there. Well, I mean, what's your what's your favorite thing about Madai that like you didn't get other schools or what's different about Madai? It's like, like I ain't gonna lie to you. Like school, at least college, has always been easy to me, right? Because like I get to do stuff on my own time. Sure. But like, I feel that. Are we talking about just, like, basketball or, like... Anything. Well, basketball, it's, like, it's a free-flowing structure. So, it's, like, we have plays, mm-hmm. right? But if, like... I don't know a lot of them. You say you don't know a lot no, of them? We, we have a lot. Of them. Oh, yeah, we got, like, 20 of them, 25, 30. Like 30. 40. 40? Something like that, mid-30s. That's fair. But, like, Coach Long told me, and I saw this with Wilcott. Now, Wilcott, I feel like, is the exception to almost every rule because... He's tough, right? But, like, Coach Long told me, if you can get busy out of this set, then go after it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, every coach says that. And then I saw it, and I was like, oh, shit, he's right. Like, if you feel like you have a mismatch, then go attack it. 
We ran that shit like at the end of every game. Flat? Seven, yeah, flat. Seven times in a row. So the screen right here for Wilcock comes off and just go seven times in a and fucking row, and they didn't adjust. That happened in our development game. I sold. Oh yeah, the flat. Yeah, where you ran it and then got your shit tossed. Dog, he just spawned out the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that dude was big as fuck. I Dog, got a kid, yeah, dude, kid. Got a no kid. shit, not even, not even. He was twenty eight. He had a. He was twenty eight. Yeah. He was twenty. Oh my god. He hugged his kid after the game. No, nah, yeah. If you're he playing, actually had a child. If you're twenty eight playing development, like you might want to hang it up. But <laughs> nah, like when I say, because like we already ran it. And he played me like on some Ben Simmons shit, like underneath the free throw line. Uh-huh. And I'm walking it up. I'm like, oh, you're so fucking weird. Double cross it. Moses parts the Red Sea. I'm like, oh shit, I'm at the basket. Fucking 6'8 spawns out. Give me that shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Ball game, 71 72. Yeah. And I smoked two free throws. After talking shit about like how Grant we're from Texas and we don't Dog. miss free throws. No, 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 no. Like no, Grant no. Williams. <laughs> no, 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 no. I said, I said, my mom made me shoot free throws and make them all net, so this should be like <laughs> in fucking hit front. I forget who said that. I don't know front room, back room. Somebody said that he was at the free throw line, actively talking shit, saying, "Yeah, I'm from Texas. We don't miss free throws." Clank. And, clank no, clank. it was clank. what pissed me off. It was it was front rim. I get fouled again. I'm like, okay, it's your legs. Back rim. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm thinking the whole time because long long called a timeout. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're never gonna get that opportunity again. They're gonna go score, and now you have to go score. Mm-hmm. It it's a wrap. Yeah. But about Madai, like, I don't know. Like it's it's just a lot to do out here. Like, as compare like in comparison to my other schools, like it's way more to do. Like, and everything's so close, like fucking my barber shop is five minutes in a walk. Mm-hmm. I have a corner store up the block. Like our Walmart at Greenville was like forty five minutes away. And there's, like, mom and pops, but it's like, bro, I'm not about to pay $8 for a bottle of shampoo. You're out your fucking mind. So Walmart's here. Target's here. Like, and this is, like, of course, off-campus stuff. This is more talking about Buffalo. But that was, like, one of the main reasons I came to my die because I'm in a bigger city. It's not Fort Worth. It's not Dallas. Mm-hmm. But it's as close as I'm going to get unless I wanted to stay at Fort. Because, like, if I wanted to fucking walk on at TCU and just be a guy with no name on the back of his jersey, like, of course I could. Anybody could. But, like... If I want to go somewhere and actually play ball and be somewhere where it feels like home, it's my die. Mm-hmm. And like, um, Coach Hack and Coach Long played a big part into it too. I'm not gonna lie to it. Like my first meeting with Hack, he was like, "What's up, fucker?" It's like, "Hey." <laughs> <That's a joke. laughs> it, it felt it felt like okay, like I rock with you, like mm-hmm. you're cool people. You feel me? So yeah, that's what. You haven't been cussed out yet though. No, I haven't. And I'm waiting on it too. TikTok. <laughs> I'm waiting on it. Um, I was gonna say uh, a lot of people that come on here talk about how Coach Hack is like a big reason why they decide to finally like, just like fuck it, I'm gonna go to Madai's. Like they come here, they take a visit, and they're like Coach Hack just seems like a dope dude, so I'm just gonna pull. Yeah, up. no, he's cool people. Like we're gonna have Coach on the show soon. Fucking probably next week if we're being really honest. Yeah, no, ha- Coach Hack is like I think that'll be a great episode. Coach is a communicator. It's gonna be two hours long. Yeah, you know he's in the Navy. I didn't, he looks like it. He, was, he showed me a picture. He's like, this is back when I was jacked. I was he like, posted Rips. a photo with his friend on Instagram on his story. Oh, no, he was buff. As fuck, dude. Yeah, dude. I've seen that picture a hundred times now. Bro, you weren't here. Before Open Gym yesterday, he played Zymir in a one-on-one in the post. And Cooked him. Fucking dude, dude, dude. dude. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 Beat no, Joe no, with no. one hand. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like fucking beating the sh- Bro, you don't. <laughs> and talking shit too. Like throwing down one of those. Like he was killing I don't, him. I don't doubt it. Dude, he deadass beat Joe with one hand and zero dribbles. That's kind of crazy. Like, he was pump faking with no dribbles and Joe, like, flew by. <laughs> like, it's not, like, it made no Coach, fucking sense. Coach Hack was talking, like, Coach Hack talked shit to me in, like, workouts. Really? Like, I'll be on the gun. And he always like, does that. Yeah, I didn't Rick. know I didn't know he did that, though. And, like, I'm shooting, I'm shooting, like, by the doors where you come in, mm-hmm. right? And he's like, fuck, you miss a lot. And I was like, so what do I do? So he's like, all right. I was like, move over. So he shows me, like, how to get low, shoot up. And he's like, he cashes like six Mason, in a row. Mason, that's and he's true. like, yeah, and by the way, this isn't a fucking winter coat. Cash, cash. So I, I'm doing it. And he's like, you finally look like a fucking shooter. Thank God. He was like, <laughs> I don't know how you didn't know this already, but whatever. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm thinking like, he's fucking right. Like, why am I? Like, because I hate when coaches are right. Mm-hmm. When I think I'm doing something the right way. And then they're like, no, idiot. This is how you do it. And on top of that, so when you talk shit, I'm like, oh, my God. 
it's gotta be like such a weird feeling to be so knowledgeable. You can actively talk shit, do the thing that you're trying to teach them and see it working and then continue to talk shit. Cause like, he's the perfect so combo of young. He was good when he played mm -hmm. and he knows the game. So you can't be like, well, you might know it, but you were trash. He's in the fucking hall of fame. Mm -hmm. Like 1200 points. That's that's hard. Like that's tough. You can't deny him about that. So, it's yeah, he's he's tough. Yeah, but when he was talking, he'll like break down plays in practice or even in a game situation where he'll. You ever seen that interview with Iman Shumper where he talks about LeBron like in the post up where he says like he'll tell you what's happening as yeah. it's happening. He'll like say out loud, cut back door when he, if he flinches and then he'll throw the ball. Like you'll see him do that in game, like call plays. Like if they do this, we're gonna do this, and then you'll just watch it unfold and you're like, I don't know how the fuck you just did that, but it worked. I hope to be able to. What? In the future, though. Like, be able to, like, you know, when we do baseball scrimmages and mm -hmm. then he brings out the clipboard yeah. and he starts drawing shit up. You from, hope to be able to understand what's yeah, going I on. I hope to be like, to be able to consistently understand the play. Show me. That's, that's, I think that's a good question. I feel like that's just playing a lot of basketball, though. Mm -hmm. like, Dude. That's just like, games. like, you weren't like in those, bro. He literally gets the board and ma <laughs> will make something up. A brand on the new spot. play on the spot, scratch. To you. look at on who's, who's on defense. Sometimes after that, he'll be like, yeah, I saw that play on Twitter this morning. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember. Dude, the one TikTok play was vibes. That shit never didn't work. Where he did fucking, what was it called? Where we did the, on the zone, where we did a screen, screen, and a layup. That shit worked 100% oh, of the Oh, the time. fucking um, that shit blast? Never, yes. Yeah. That shit worked 100% of the fucking time. Yeah, yeah. That shit was the he most. He said he got that on TikTok? Yes. Yeah. The most, he did it in the, when we fucking decided in practice, I saw this on TikTok. Because it's screen here, screen here, layup. Every single time we ran that in a game, nonstop fucking layups. fact. <laughs> yeah, that shit actually it was. So that's another level of knowledge to be able. You have to know what every single person on offense and defense is doing on the court to be able to like tell them if they're doing it wrong. But you can you can tell he just like loves basketball. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can tell he, you can tell he loves basketball. Like he, more than anything else. Like in he the really world. like if you took if you took basketball away from him, he'd be like insane. he'd be like, bro, what the fuck do I do now? And that's like people think that's like a bad thing. No, no, no it's a and great it's thing. it's it's not mm -hmm. like. I mean, I think, like, if people who say, like, yeah, I love basketball, if you take basketball away from them, are they going to be able to function? Most likely. That's what I'm saying. Like, and, and that's, like, okay. Like, basketball is not the end-all, be-all of life, period. But, like, if you claim you love basketball, like, when I had COVID, mm -hmm. bro, I was in my room, like, going insane. Because I didn't even, like, I was like, dog, I just need a basketball here just to know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. I'm, I feel that heavy. Bro. Bro, because when we couldn't be in the gym— those for two weeks, two after weeks the dude, I was sitting in my chair form shooting 200 form shots a day because I was going insane. Like, insane. That's real. I couldn't fucking function. <laughs> and then last week, I went home for fucking Jewish holidays, and I, like, gym space is, in Canada is so, like, iffy. So iffy. I only got in the gym with my trainer, and I'm like, whatever, it's like $40, $50 for a two hour session, and I'd rather pay that than go and pay $30 for, like, entrance to a gym. Right. When I get two, hour, two hours of structure for $50. And chances are I'm going to get a fucking side net and only be able to form shoot because the fucking these little kids are playing 19 on 27. That shit me. Oh, but like, bro, I only got in, like, I was home for, what, like, nine days and I only got in, like, three or four times and, bro, I was fucking, and, like, I mean, I was lifting so I'm lucky enough my parents, like, throughout throughout the last, like, five, six years have put a gym in our basement, like, slowly, gradually. Right. So that's been dope as fuck to be able to lift there and off the But, bro, like, I was going fucking insane. I was shooting on my driveway just, like, fucking around like I had to. Just holding the basketball. Yeah, it's terrible, no, bro. That COVID is terrible. Is terrible. COVID, COVID's terrible, bro. My first year of prep school, I got COVID the day. It's kind of like in Ohio, at least. It's like, you know, how we're only allowed to start practicing October 15th. So I'm I got. I'm not fucking from Ohio. <laughs> no, here, here in college in, basketball. In, oh, yeah. You're only okay. allowed to start practicing October 15th. So there it's October 30th. Dude, I got fucking COVID October 29th. <laughs> no, that's shit. Nah, yeah, that's. It was bad. God is like, nope. Oh, no, it's the same shit happened to me here. Oh, yeah, it was in the day before you Oh, I don't. You fucking, no, fucking get what? cleared mm -hmm. that same day. Play a day. development game. And then you play a development game, and then I have COVID. That's funny. Get back. The season's game. over. Season's over. Yeah. That same day I get back, we have a game that next day. Did you even end up practicing? Like, yeah, he had two practices. I had right? two practices under my belt. And, like, I wouldn't even call them, like, really practices. I was just doing, like, drills. Like, hey, what did we do in those practices? Wasn't it, like, the um, f like uh, blah, 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 the free throw shooting? And then yeah. The last practice of the year, like, when she was coming to a conclusion, it was mainly more, like, game plan for, like, half an hour, 45 minutes, and then just, like, skill stuff just to, like, yeah. yeah. Game plan for Utica. Game plan for Utica. And then I we just literally just did fucking. Free throw running, rotating. Yeah. Um, like, the guard big breakdown. That's, that's all I did. Fucking Cause, like, three I'll... ball, two man. Just, like, some skill stuff. Just, like, mm -hmm. keep sharp. Because you don't want to, like, exert your body the day before you have. You have to win to make the playoff game. Yeah, before you have to see 
fucking Damn, we almost beat Utica, too. That's true. We almost beat Utica? Oh, I thought you were going to say Alfred almost beat Utica. No, we almost beat Utica. Yeah, we should have beat Utica. Yeah. Damn. Next year. <laughs> Next year, we're for all those fucking... Okay, well, um... I was going to ask him about yeah, piece sure. of advice yeah, yeah. or something you would tell your younger self or something you would teach your son, maybe. Um, Some important things about basketball that the younger generation needs to know. Or life. Or both. Well, like, life is just, like, like listen to yourself. Because, like, you have to live and die with your consequences and with your decisions, right? So, like, I've experienced that in positive and negative ways, but especially being in college— like, I mean, like I said, this is my fourth school. So I left every school for some type of reason, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's like when I left Minnesota is because I was just too big for that program. And if I stayed another year, my numbers were so good the first year. Why well, You stay didn't talk about that what? your first year in Minnesota. Oh. What, that was JUCO or? That was JUCO. Um, I don't really know. I, went, I was with two of my best friends. Like, we were basically the head coaches of the team. Really? Yeah. So, like. You guys good? No. Like, we were good as, like, individuals. Like, you put us three against any other three in that conference, we'll probably bust their ass. Like, but, yeah. you know, one of my, like, my guy who was my roommate, he led the conference in assists. My other teammate, my other guy, he led the conference in scoring. And I was just, like, a key piece of, like, both of them. So, like, I would go in those games and get, like, 22, 7, and 5. And then transfer to the D1 Juco. Or the, the better Juco? No, so I went Kansas, sat, didn't play, redshirted, and was just like a practice dummy. Okay. That Kansas shit, oh my God. Like when I say there's, if there's been a time I've been depressed in my life, because like... That'll do it too. Dog, imagine going into a practice and you know you're a redshirt, right? So can I explain this Kansas shit like this whole year? You, you, All right, for sure. More content. So I go in, right? I only go... Because it was out of state, and my biggest— This is right out of high school. This is right out of high school. And my high school, so I was 2020, was COVID. So, like, my like my whole school ended, and this is Texas COVID, where, like, everyone has COVID. Mm -hmm. it's like, we don't have really restrictions, but, like, my mom being an East Coaster is like, bro, you're not fucking going out. Like, there's open gyms everywhere. We're breaking into gyms and everything. But, like, my mom's like, no, like— We'll get you a basketball hoop if you want one. But, like, you're not going outside. Anyway, so, like, I go into the season hella unprepared. I have no trainers. I've never really had a trainer. All my, like, training has just been, like, trial and failure, right? Like, I'll see a move on Instagram. Be like, okay, I'm going to do this next time. If fucking doesn't work out, then hey, so be it. But I go into Kansas hella unprepared. I'm, like, a buck seventy six one six two, getting fucked off. Like... There's guards that are, like, way bigger than me, way stronger, way smarter. And, like, they're moving, scoring the ball, passing it. Like, I have, like I've never felt dumb and felt like I've gotten my ass busted when the person, like, hasn't scored. Like, it's just, like, knowing they have the opportunity. Oh, okay. It's like, that wasn't good defense. I just fucking missed. And I'm getting told that. All, and, like, it's crazy because I've given people that feeling. So to have that feeling... It's like, oh, my God. Like, I've been doing this for the last 12 years. Now I'm finally getting it on the other end. It's like, oh, shit. So I I go there, and it's a freshman class of 10. They only have five returners, right? Because, I mean, Juco is just freshman, sophomore. So they only have five returners. And the 10 freshmen that come in, we're all dogs. Like, we in open gym where it's just us getting after it, busting ass, right? And I'm kind of like... I was real passive because, like, everyone was so good. So I would get it, get to my spot, and kick it out. And, like, the coaches, like, wanted to score. So I'm making other people look like scorers, and he's telling me, like, you don't have to make the plays. I make the plays, right? Anyway, that happens. We don't have any games for the first semester due to COVID. But on the other hand, he can – the transfer portal, this is, like, the, the beginning of it, is wide open. So he tells us the end of the practice is November 23rd. We go home the 24th. He tells us, he says, okay, word for word. You guys want to play around? Cool. I'm going to have 15 new guys when you come back. And we're looking around like, fuck off. I'm like, no, you're not. He said, I'm going to have 15 new guys that are going to take each and every one of you guys' jersey if you don't come on your shit. I'm like, all right, whatever. I come back January like 15th. 
I'm looking like, who the fuck are these guys? Guys, windmilling, all this crazy shit. So I went, we were like, we were Adidas sponsored team. We had practice jerseys. I went from wearing a practice jersey that was like given to us this year, a brand new, to like a practice jersey from like fucking 2012. My shorts, I like Jalen Rose shorts. Like they were damn near like in the middle of my calf. Relatable. Like they were, bro, like I'm saying like huge jersey, huge shorts. I had to give away my team shoes to one of my, like one of the new guys who ended up leaving and taking my shoes. Mm -hmm. Bro, I was hot. And like I was a practice dummy for the whole, like I was just like defense. And my coach was like, he was like a psychological guy. So I'll imagine playing defense for 94 feet for 40 minutes. And then you're like, coach, I need a breather. He's like, oh, I was just about to put you on offense. And you're like, oh. And you're like, no, you need a breather. He puts he puts your sub in on offense for like three possessions. He's like, all right, end of the drill. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? So I had to deal with that for a whole, like a whole thing. And it was just like, I would go in the gym and like work out. And the coach would call me out and be like, you're never going to do that in game. Matter of fact, you're never going to play a game. So you can do whatever you want because you're not going to play. And I'm in this, I'm in this bitch like, bro, like, is he fucking with me? Like, I don't know what's up. So end of the year meetings come, right? We all know how those goes. They can either go really good or really fucking bad. So end of the year meeting, he's like, all right, Ian, we're going we're gonna to let you go. And he was like telling me like, okay, use your, he, I, I used my redshirt year. Like I still have a redshirt year, but it was a COVID year. So it's like, you know, whatever. And he was like, well, we're going to bring you back, but we don't think you fit our culture and values. And, you know, we're going to have some new guys that are just a little bit older. So we're going to we're going to let you get your film together and we're going to ship you out. You know, you're going to hit the portal. And I'm in his office looking at him like this, thinking in my head, what fucking film do I have? Like, what film can I get? You don't record practices. And even if you did, I would just look like fucking Patrick Beverly. And like, I'm just going to ship my high school film around. Like, what are we doing? So. I'm in my room. I have no roommate at the time. I'm in my room just looking at the walls. Like, bro, like, maybe I'm not built for college. Like, maybe this shit isn't what it's cracked up to be. Like, may, I'm really thinking, I'm calling all my friends, I'm calling my dad, my mom, and I'm, like, telling them, like, dog, do I suck? Like, I'm calling my dad, and I'm like, can you put a stack with me? Am I trash? And he's like, no. Nah. And I'm like, no, 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 this isn't father, son, this isn't you trying to coddle me like, Doug, do I suck? And he was like, I don't think you suck. I was like, I think you're just in a bad situation. Click. I was like, fuck a bad situation. Like, what are you talking about? We're tenth in the nation. This is the best situation I could be in. We're winning. Call my other people. Call my friends. And I'm talking to my teammate. They're like, nah, bro, you trash. Like, you're garbage as fuck. Like, bro, I would be in practice, like, dribble the ball off my foot. Like, you know what the Focus. yips is? Yes, bro. Like, yeah, I was about to say that, bro. It's just you get in your head and then you, like. Ter worst case. Worst case of the yips. Dribbling the ball off my foot. Fucking shooting them. Like, and I can barely shoot now. Shooting the ball and shooting that bitch over, under, left, right. Like, terrible. Like, I'm smoking layups at the rim and drills. That's what happens, bro, when you just lose confidence in yourself. That's Dog, the worst thing. That's the worst lost thing that complete that and utter confidence. So I was like, bro. I'm just going to go home, and we're just going to see what's up. So my number one thing when I left high school, I told all my counselors, I was like, I'm never going to work a 9 to 5. Ended up having to work at a place called Mod Pizza, mm -hmm. right, with one of my best friends. And, like, with this job, I got money, so I ended up getting, uh, like, a L.A. Fitness membership. So I'm going to L.A. Fitness busting ass. And my mom, my mom and my dad are, like, my best friends. So I would tell my mom, like, Ma, I just went hit him with a double cross and then in transition threw it off the backboard and laid him and whoop de whoop. And she was like, oh, okay, cool. She was like, you know, like LA fitness doesn't have an all American game. I was like, fuck. It's like, you're right. <laughs> and my mom's, my mom's cause like, bro, I'm the youngest of six. You're six at five of siblings? Three by, yeah, three by marriage, two by blood. And they're all athletes, mm -hmm. like college athletes. So my mom would tell me like, yeah, like, when when uh, LA Fitness starts giving scholarship money, then like we can make something happen because you you talk like you Michael Jordan. So I'm like, fuck, dog. Like That's this, bro. This sounds like a movie. What are you, what? <laughs> bro? Like she's telling me all this shit, and I'm like, fuck. Like I really. So she's like, my name my nickname is Nunny. So she's like, Nunny, either you go play college ball or you go to the military. And she was like, even if you want to work, she was like, you have to be putting money towards our bills. I was like, okay, cool. So I'm working at Mod. 
and it's like the Chipotle for like pizza. And the, like this is when I clicked, I'm like, yeah, you have to go play ball. The smell of marinara sauce mm -hmm. was fucking with me mentally. <laughs> like making the pizzas <laughs> was fucking with me mentally, bro. Like on some shit, like we would get free pizzas every night to take home. My manager would be like, you want a pizza? Fuck no. Get that shit out my face. Like, I don't want this at all. At that point, I was like, yeah, I have to go play college ball. I have to be somewhere outside of Texas. Seeing so many Whataburger signs and so many, like, Canes and all that shit, I was like, bro, I hate Texas Dude, so much. So, bro, Canes is fucking fire. It's, I've only had it once. Never had it. It's fire. So fire. It's, a, it's great chicken. But, like, after you eat it, seven days a week, after you eat it five times, it just starts to taste like paper. Mm -hmm. And you're like, dog, I can't do this shit anymore. So... Ended up just, like, shipping my high school film around, hoping for, like, a tryout or whatever. I get an offer from a school in Arizona, NAIA, and I'm literally working the line, working someone's pizza. Get a call. Coach Gordon Stubblefield from Park University. I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. Go into the back, take the call. He's like, yeah, we don't have any scholarship money. Okay, cool. How much does it cost? Yeah, it costs, like, about 20000 a semester. No, not doing that, right? So I'm like, okay. We go to a JUCO in Dallas. Then I start to think, bro, that's 45 minutes a day. 45 minutes there, 45 minutes back. That's hour 30. I don't have enough money to get my own apartment. I'm not living with my dad because, like, that's just he has his own space. We're both, like, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, yeah, I, I can't do that, right? So out of nowhere, my friend calls me. I'm like, so where are you? Because he cleared house. My old coach cleared house. All 10 Freshman that he recruited for the class of 2021, he was like, no, all you guys can fucking pack your shit and go. So I'm like, where are you going? He's like, yeah, I'm about to go to school in Minnesota. And what the fuck? Minnesota? Like, why? He was like, dog, like, you want to get put on? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? So the coach ends up calling me. He's like, yeah, man, I like your film. And, like, this is my high school film. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I'm going to come in and look like a fucking lottery pick. Like, I've gotten so much better. And he was like, yeah, I like your film. I think you could be this and that. So I come in, and my Minnesota season was, like, tough. Like, it was – I had great numbers, but just, like, imagine, like, you have to wake up, and you got to go three hours on the road, and it's negative 25 outside. It's, like, black ice, so, like, you're in danger of tearing your ACL, walking into the gym. Bunch of shit. Like, oh, my – Minnesota was the best, worst place ever. Best as far as basketball, worst as far as literally everything else. People are cool. They're nice. But, like, as far as, like, the environment, oh, my God, it was terrible. I hated it so much. Hated it. And then fucking Greenville, chapel credits. <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> and now we're going to die. Now we're going to die. Lean with it, rock with it. Go Mavericks. <laughs> okay. Do you want to finish off with the uh, oh. piece of advice? Oh, yeah. So the piece of advice I would give myself or like somebody I know um yeah so in life make your own decision and stick with them and know they're the right decisions right and even if they aren't right don't regret them like just take there's no like losses just learning experiences and as a person who hates losing like you know I think that's a true thing um and in basketball try to play as much as you can like even if your body hurts still go play you know what I'm saying and just like don't let any, because this was like my biggest thing at Greenville is like I didn't I don't think they knew what to do with me. Like I played one through four, so like there's times I'm running point guard, there's times I'm playing the fucking sport four spot and I got to guard a six seven guy, right? So don't let anybody confine you, like so yeah you're a point guard, yeah you're a small forward. Basketball is so positionless now, like any like Gary Payton the second played center for the Warriors at a point in time. Like, he was running center, like, he was running center in some of their sets. 6'3", six, 6'4", six, can jump off the gym, hell yeah. But, like, he's not your prototypical center. Basketball is so crazy now and so different that all you have to do is just play games. And another thing, don't duck anybody. Don't say, like, oh, I don't want to play him because he's fucking number three in the nation. Like, okay, you might bust his ass and now you're number three. And now he's the guy that works at Chipotle. Like, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Like, you saw this firsthand. Guarded Wilcott. Got, bro, what? He's busting my ass. But, like, if I don't guard him and I guard, like, 
like a no shade to Joe. Joe, I love you. If I guarded Joe, like who's getting better, right? Mm -hmm. And like I did this yesterday and like I'm guarding Joe and he's just like, yeah, I'm going to send the corner. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. <laughs> like, well, to be fair though, he was not getting the ball because I was in that run too. Like he was not going to get the ball in that run. And also like – this was like an after an hour and a half where I played like fucking seven games. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, I, I was not moving either. I ain't gonna lie. Joe, I'm looking at you. I was busting your ass yesterday. Real shit. We can end it off on that. <laughs> wait, 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 you want to address Quan's Texas comments as well? Nah. Yeah, bro. I'm fucking from Texas, man. Like, <laughs> I'm, like bro, what? He's from Texas. Joe can't guard Ian. And, and that shipped across the border. <laughs> <laughs>